Hey guys, Dave with Moneyology here. Hope everyone is having a great weekend. This is the weekend market review for the weekend of December 2nd and 3rd, 2017. For those of you who are new to uh, these videos, we do these on a week every weekend where we look at daily, weekly, and monthly charts of very important sectors in the markets that we believe help help us get a better understanding of the trends, that those that we want to be in, those that we want to avoid, and, uh, and just get a better understanding of the general direction of the market. So let's have a look at the charts today. So we start start off here with the 10-year Treasury yield, which is very important for understanding the direction of the dollar. Dollar, a lot of uh, income-producing uh, equities, and and just inflation in general is, of course, precious metals. So this is the daily chart here, and it's basically showing a consolidative pattern here, as you'll see when we look at the weekly and monthly charts. In our opinion, this is just consolidating over time, and uh, it's going to break out higher, and that's going to mean that interest rates are moving in an upward trajectory. Now when you look at the weekly chart, we pointed out this out, we've got this bullish pattern that we broke out of here. Now we're consolidating, this is the part that you see on the daily chart. We're consolidating above the 50, upward moving 50 week moving average and upward sloping 200 day moving average. 50 is above the 200, that's very bullish. We've consolidated and um, tagged the 50 on the weekly RSI successfully, and now we've, we're bouncing off that zone. So for us, we want to see a break above the 25 level to confirm that interest rates are indeed uh, getting ready to move higher. Now, here's a monthly perspective of what we're looking at, and we're in the early stages of a very, very major uh, bear market in fixed income, in our opinion, and a very bull market in interest rates. So this is the bullish flag pattern that we're breaking out of right over here, right below that 25 mark that I pointed out on the weekly. And uh, this, this is a breakout consolidation above the trend line. Once we break above 25, that's going to make a move towards that 3, which likely coincides with the 3% mark that we saw in 2013. Don't know if it's going to break above 3% so quickly, but at the same time, this is something you want to be very, very cognizant of as you consider investing in equities, precious metals, the, uh, the dollar, etc. So very important chart here. Another area of focus is look at the MACDs. They're curling down, but in our opinion, they're going to curl down, possibly a little bit lower, and then curl back up, which is a very bullish move should that occur. Now taking a look at gold, uh, gold has been consolidating similarly to uh, treasury yields. You notice treasury yields had this uh, multi-month consolidation. Well, gold's kind of in the same pattern, likely waiting for to see what yields do but we believe that gold is moving higher. You see that even though price has been basically uh, consolidating between 1260 and 1300 here for the last two months, momentum has been going higher and higher and higher. That's a very, very bullish development. And that's why we believe momentum is far more important than price uh, in terms of understanding direction of the market. Now, on the one hand, we're below the daily uh, middle Bollinger Band, but on the other hand, we're we're starting to break higher again, and we think that we we need to see a close above 1300 to confirm that this is a bullish trend uh, in the ver very early in the making. Now, what gives us reason to believe that things are bullish? Well, first, on the weekly time frame, we've broken out above this downtrend. We've consolidated here for several months, and now it looks like we're getting set to break higher. We're above the 50 on the weekly RSI. That's where you want to be, and it looks like we're finding support here. So it might take a few more weeks, but this move is going to break to the upside. We think the probability is very high on that uh, on that event happening. And look at the MACDs. They're starting to curl higher towards zero. That's, again, a very positive development. As we consolidate above the upward sloping and upward um, sloping 50 and 200 uh, moving average. So we think that you know it's, it's probably a little too late in the year to see 1400 this year. But the move is going to be very powerful and massive. And uh, there are going to be some huge opportunities. You should be looking at names in the precious metal space now, adding them if you if you like more contrarian opportunities or waiting to see the breakout to to be piling in on momentum uh, names once the sector really breaks out. This is the monthly chart. Look at that downtrend since 2011 in the midst of a very, very powerful secular bull market. We have this very small um, bearish correction here, which is fine um, unless you were involved in that. And that's why technicals are so important. And now we've broken out above this trend line and we, we need a big flush move higher to confirm that this is indeed a breakout. But look at the volume. This is huge. It suggests that things are starting to take place uh, and uh, this sector is going to ignite very soon. 
looking at the high yield bonds. So the high yield bonds have been basically breaking down here. We've bounced and rallied, uh, which was a very, uh, very likely development because you look, look what happened here. You had this positive divergence where price was uh, saw kind of a lower, lower low, but divergence saw a higher low, and that was that's what you want to see to confirm that the bottom, at least a short-term bottom on this time frame, is in place. Now here. Uh, you see, you see that we were not able to break out above this point of resistance, which is kind of the level where momentum broke down last time around, and uh, this is also where it happened here. And so now we're starting to, if we break below 50, that'll likely confirm that things are indeed headed lower, and that's what that's where we think the probability is higher. Why? Well, when you look at the weekly chart. We saw a bearish wedge breakdown. We saw a retest, and with lower momentum, the kind of divergence, negative divergence, we've been pointing out where we see higher highs in price, but momentum is not following. Now we tried to bounce again, and yet we're having trouble breaking above that 60 mark in the RSI. And if that doesn't doesn't break higher, expect to see lower prices. And what, whereas the stock market seems to be going up. High yield is telling a different story, and so I would I would be very very careful right now to be riding this last wave of momentum higher in the markets, specifically looking at the high yield story. Now the monthly again is very bullish still; it's still in that over 70 uh, mark on on the monthly. So so long as we're above this middle Bollinger band, which is around the 35 level, 35.17, I think the picture is still bullish. But look at the MACDs; they're continuing to curdle down. So unless we start unless we start moving back up this can be a very ominous sign I think if this closes below zero that's gonna um, that's gonna ignite a recession and so that's a powerful call but we'll see if I'm right in, in that hunch now having a look at oil we've been very bullish for a long time here we're breaking higher again now one thing to point out uh, this particular high at 5905 creative ne negative divergence versus the high when we ha had it at 58 so if we can't break this level, uh, this kind of mini downtrend in momentum. If we can break higher, that might suggest that we might be in store for a pullback, possibly as low as 50 to wash out some of these uh, longs that are piling in, in probably a very, very, uh, very over heavy bullish uh, trade right now. So looking at the weekly chart, we're above we're above that 57 62 200 weekly EMA which is a very bullish development but if we can't break to the 65 level I think that its probability is increasing that we might pull back towards that 50 zone again to to kind of wash out some of the weekends that'll likely coincide with this retest of the 60 level so we'll see anything is possible here I wouldn't cut my lungs uh, long exposure to oil um, because there have been some really good names we've been po posting like uh, NOG was one that has done really well for us so anyway uh, oil is again very very bullish long term but it might have a multi-week pullback here as we come into the December close of the year why do we think that long term is very bullish well we've got this inverted head and shoulders and the neckline is right here around 60 if we can maybe consolidate just a little bit here and then boom break out higher That'll be a very positive development in, in oil and energy markets. Uh, so that's an area that longer term, the next 12 months, you're going to see much higher prices from our perspective. Looking at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ starting to roll over on the daily. We pointed out some negative, slight negative divergence here. Uh, we, we had a nice hammer pattern um, on Friday, but we'll see if there's a follow through or a, a continued rollover. Taking a look at the weekly, so far very bullish, up, 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 but mm, it, it, I, I'm not, there's, there isn't such high upside potential for me to be long, for us to be long in this particular space. Now, looking at the NASDAQ monthly, still exceptionally overbought, but as I pointed out, there's a negative break here of this bearish break um, breakdown. So this might take many months to take hold, but it's possible that this is the beginning of the end of this particular uh, multi-year bull run. We'll see. Russell Daily, this is something very interesting as well. We broke out. We broke out here, um, and we made an all-time high in the small cap space. We moved from 1454 to 1551 in a matter of a couple weeks. Very bullish, but uh, you saw momentum here uh, lower than momentum was last time around here. So that's very, very negative divergence. Coincides with the negative uh, 
negative charts that we're seeing in the junk ETF and that suggests that we might be starting a, a rollover process so um, I would be trimming exposure to equities right now pretty aggressively uh, looking at the weekly here again negative divergence um, on the weekly we've got we're, we're getting stalled around that 6970 point but we're at a higher price point in, in terms of actual price so that's a negative divergence and that's not what you want to see on the other hand MACDs are starting to curl higher so if we can break here above 70 this could be the beginning of a multi multi week multi percentage move to the upside so uh, I, I don't have high conviction in this in this particular um, regard because of the curling MACDs so that'll be interesting to see how it plays out on the monthly we're still very uh, bullish in terms of RSI but again we've got this bearish wedge breakdown uh, which We'll see what happens, but we don't like that pattern. Uh, typically, those end up very bad. Uh, S&P, again, Friday was a very, very bullish candle, so we'll see how that plays out. S&P is very bullish on the weekly, and as you'll see on the monthly, likely the same thing. So very, S&P looks very, very good. Uh, the daily chart of the dollar. Uh, so our perspective is the dollar is going to break below 92 and ultimately head towards below 90 in the coming months ahead, which will be very bullish for commodities and uh, and and just and precious metals. Now, for the time being, we're finding some support here on RSI at the 38 to 40 level. So that's something to to see if if that can maintain support that's kind of positive divergence for the time being we might actually rally yet again in the dollar maybe try to break above uh, this 50 50 on the weekly uh, 50 week moving average around 9550 um, perhaps shake out some more uh, shorts but ultimately I think we move lower and and I, I tell you why because on a monthly perspective, it just looks like the MACDs are still uh, weak, and they're making they're basically at three-year lows, and we're 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 basically right right below the 50-week moving monthly moving average, and it looks like things want to move lower. However, I I remain open to the idea that this could be a b double bottom here around that 90 level, and ultimately we we make a run back towards that 100, 102 level, ultimately break towards 120. Kind of depends on what happens in the markets. If the markets start start a recess recessive type of move, uh, and have like a 5, 10, 15 percent pullback, it's very possible the dollar can can find some legs underneath it. So we will see stay tuned now looking at the volatility index telling you something in the volatility is telling me things are starting to creep up look at this uh, we're making new highs in volatility albeit small ones uh, and and MACDs are starting to cur curl above zero we broke above this downtrend that we had since August so it's uh, a, a little bit ominous we're above the 50 on the weekly um, Mac RSI in the, on, the, on the weekly chart we're still in this downtrend in theory but this is still a bullish flag if we can break above this 15 mark on a weekly close that will likely uh, signal a move towards 2250 on the VIX which will coincide with a fairly large uh, move in um, negative move in the equity markets again looking at the monthly look at this RSI it's starting to break higher this is all the while uh, markets are making all-time highs that's not what you want to see and look at the MACDs this is very very important we're about to cross zero on the MACDs if this breaks zero on the monthly VIX I can assure <laughs> there are no guarantees in the markets but there's a very very high probability that the that the markets will have at least a five to ten percent correction uh, if this breaks above zero so stay tuned very important uh, indicator here uh, the world world stocks are kind of rolling over right now and you see that there here as well uh, the momentum is really starting to break it's no longer overbought territory it's starting to break lower and uh, this looks and again this also coincides with on the monthly level we can't break above 69 and 70 which is the area we precisely the area we broke down in 2008 when we, when we had the the crash we've retested that and this is massive resistance I think it's not going to break to the upside right now, and we're going to likely um, test some of these downside areas 
probably around 15, uh, 1500, 1550. That's a massive move to the downside. Possibly a 20% correction uh, is, a, is a very big possibility. Yet within the greater context, it's within uh, the context of a bull market. So. Um, if you're in if you're in this trade, I would trim my position uh, and 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 wait for a pullback, but and but remain open to the possibility that it indeed can break higher by that 2050 level and ultimately go towards 2400. But I would say the probability is about 60 to 70 percent now that we're actually going to have a 10 to 20 percent pullback rather than a five to 10 percent move to the upside. So stay tuned. Ultimately, uh, I just see some weak, very weak potential uh, developments taking place now. So be very cautious in the equity markets, but be very bullish in precious metals, potentially the dollar and uh, and and, infl and inflationary vehicles like uh, the 10 year treasury. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please, if you like these videos, subscribe to our channel on YouTube at Moneyology and on Twitter uh, and at, on Stockwitz at Moneyology. And for those of you who are generous, generously inclined and appreciate the work that we do, we have a Patreon campaign where we're trying to raise 500, we're trying to raise 500 uh, patrons, patrons. So if you can uh, send us $10 a month pledge, that would go a long way towards helping us making better videos more often and potentially hiring other technicians to be able to join our community and provide their valuable insights and perspectives. So again, $10 a month on uh, Patreon. We have a link in the show notes. Would be would go a long way if we can get towards 500 subscribers. And then if you prefer Venmo, you can shoot us a one-time uh, gift or donation uh, that way as well. There's a link in the show notes. Thanks, guys, and have yourself a wonderful week, and good luck with your trading.